you wake up tired and by the afternoon you already feel like all your will for life or doing anything at all is gone. And this is mostly due to one reason. Your brain is overwhelmed and here's why. Your brain wasn't built for this. Picture a caveman. His day is simple. Should I hunt now or later? Is that noise a bear or just the wind? Fire or no fire? Maybe five real decisions tops. Now think about your morning. Should I hit snooze? What am I wearing? What should I eat? Should I even eat? Should I reply to that text message now or later? In fact, studies have estimated that the average person is making about 33 to 36 thousand decisions a day. And of course, most of them are subconscious because if your conscious mind were supposed to make all those decisions, your brain would have melted. But nevertheless, each of those decisions spark activity in your prefrontal cortex, which is the area of your brain in charge of thinking. And every time neurons talk to each other to make those decisions, they use a chemical called glutamate. And the problem is that glutamate builds up. So the more decisions you make, the more glutamate you have in your brain. And this, in return, is cluttering your brain and it's slowing it down. And this is what in psychology we call decision fatigue. So when your brain cannot function properly anymore, you rely on mental shortcuts, on assumptions. You are easily irritable because you cannot process information anymore. You cannot evaluate information. So basically, you are making worse decisions. The glympatic system. You already know sleep is super important, but let's make it a little tiny bit more specific. So during sleep, the cerebral fluid system flows through brain tissues and spread into the brain via channels controlled by a special type of glia cells. The cells help direct the fluid to wash over and clean between neurons. Specifically, it flushes out waste products, including excess amount of glutamate, adenosine, beta amyloid, tau proteins. And this waste loaded fluid drains out of the brain via veins. Okay, all good. But the issue is that this process only works during deep sleep, because during deep sleep, the space between neurons expands up to 60%. So there is more space in between for the fluid to flush and actually wash out all the toxins and etc. chemicals that you really need to get rid of. If you don't reach deep sleep because of stress, screen time, constant waking up during the night, then you don't get to clean your brain very well. So what happens if you don't sleep well? Waste builds up, and I'm not just talking metaphorically, but chemically. You start the day in a fog, more glutamate, adenosine, oxidative stress and inflammation. And finally, sleep deprivation is linked to cognitive decline, mood disorders, Alzheimer. Basically, while you are asleep, your brain is not off. It's cleaning, among other things, but it's doing its job well only if you are having deep sleep. Meaning, if you cut your sleep short, you're not just waking up tired. You're waking up with yesterday's chemical garbage still in your brain. So when you feel like your brain isn't functioning well, like you cannot focus, you cannot think clearly, you're easily irritated, you forget a lot, all of this could be a simple issue of maintenance, adenosine. So first of all, every decision you make takes up energy, real mental energy. Second of all, every decision you make builds up glutamate that clutters your brain if it doesn't get cleaned up. And third of all, let's talk about adenosine. Every time you use energy, your brain is producing adenosine triphosphate. This is your cell's fuel. As ATP gets broken during the day, adenosine, which is a byproduct, accumulates in your brain. Now, adenosine is a neuromodulator, a chemical your brain uses to regulate how sleepy or alert you feel. The longer you are awake and active, the more adenosine builds up and then eventually reaches a threshold at which your brain says, enough, now we need to get rest. However, you're probably drinking a lot of coffee, don't you? And caffeine does not give you energy. It just blocks 
adenosine. So what happens is that the more you get tired, the more you build adenosine and it stays in your brain. It doesn't go anywhere. But because caffeine blocks the receptors of the neurons that can actually register this adenosine, you are blind to it. Like you're numb to how tired you are until the caffeine wears off. And then all this build up adenosine hits you all at once and that's what we call a crush when you feel like you can fall asleep right there right now even as while you're talking and quite frankly you probably can because you're really that exhausted now the link between adenosine and glutamate is this vicious circle you're creating for yourself so on one hand you need to clean up glutamate otherwise your brain is too cluttered to make clear decisions and you're not that highly intelligent creature that you're supposed to be and also you're easily irritable so you're difficult to be around difficult for yourself to function okay you need to clean it up for which you need deep sleep building up a desolin by chucking coffee all the time or doom scrolling that eventually makes it very difficult to rest enough in order to fall into deep sleep so by the end of just a week of this, you're already in a vicious circle of not being able to rest. And now if that's familiar to you, it's probably because you have been in that cycle for not just a week, but months. And to bright up the mood a little bit, I'm going to give you one tip that is weird maybe but it's brilliant because it works make a little coffee like a short espresso coffee drink it lay down and take a 15 minute nap when you wake up the adenosine is partly cleared so your brain is not cluttered and then the caffeine kicks in now you're set up to perform your brain never gets to clock out now let's go back to the caveman who didn't have a perfect life but they had one thing that we no longer have natural boundaries when it got dark they rested not because they were enlightened about sleep hygiene but because they had no alternative no screens no notifications no need to use their willpower to be healthy so they didn't have to make a decision to waste even more energy and glutamate in order to make the right choice to go to sleep when it's dark now fast forward to today it's never really dark light from screens tells your brain it's still daytime which delays melatonin the hormone that prepares your body for sleep and add to that the constant background noise like the city noise from the cars and the people all that and your brain is on a constant go mode you're not ever resting and let's be honest most of the times when you say you're resting you're actually on a low effort stimulation. You're watching TV, resting. You're watching something on your laptop, resting. You're being on your phone, resting. It's not rest if your brain is continuing to receive information because then it has to process it. You're not letting your brain breathe. So that's not rest that's passive consumption try this instead set one hour a day to airplane mode just stop consuming information go for a walk sit by a window let your brain have the silence it needs to actually process and work with all that information or simply recover because real rest it's not simply about sleep it's about the absence of noise and if you never let your brain to do nothing then you cannot also expect from it to ever do anything meaningful such as focus be creative make good decisions be calm regulate your emotions you cannot expect that either so bottom line is that you feel constantly tired because indeed you're never fully resting your brain is bombarded with information and on top of that you're not letting it sleep as much and as well as it needs in order to process this cognitive informational overload and i'm gonna make another video on giving you specific tips on how to 
break this cycle, how to fight the modern society life. But I don't want this video to be too long because I know you don't have the attention span for it because you're tired. So I'm going to see you in the next video. And if I'm wrong and you still want to watch something else, I'm going to leave a link to why burnout is so common in people with ADHD. Even if you don't have ADHD, some of those things will relate to you because some things are just common to the human brain. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.